In light of recent buffs, Adora has overtaken Zeevee as the fifth best hero and has earned herself a spot alongside Sai and Churchill as one of the best heroes in the game. This video will examine everything relevant to Adora's power, including a general overview, strengths, weaknesses, best energies, and her playstyles and her best maps. Adora is quite a unique hero. Her main role is that of a selfish main DPS, excelling in the late game after you get her to level 20. Adora costs $1080 on Chimps mode and shoots out Seeking Beams of Light for her main attack. Her levels gradually increase her offensive capabilities, increasing range, pierce, attack speed, projectile count, and damage. Her abilities are not to be underestimated as well. Long Armor Flight provides her an immense amount of range, pierce, normal type damage, and eventually extra damage at an absurdly low 35 second cooldown. Her Blood Sacrifice ability is the core of her kit, which will be discussed later. Her Ball Flight provides decent general damage and cleanup, but only starts to shine when she reaches level 20. Keep those details in mind as we discuss what makes Adora meta. As a selfish DPS hero, her damage ceiling far surpasses those of even Churchill. Ironically enough, she has the exact same leveling curve as Church. With her leveling up at a snail's pace, she relies on her blood sacrifice ability to reach key levels on crucial rounds. Upon activation, the blood sacrifice ability lets you select a tower to sacrifice, converting every $1 spent on the tower into 4 XP for Adora. He also gains a temporary attack speed and range boost after sacrificing, which drastically increases when he reaches level 20, giving up to double attack speed and range for an entire minute. That level 20 sacrifice buff is what propels Adora from being mediocre to outstanding, capable of functioning as your main DPS for the late game. Adora's blood sack ability is only a third of her abilities. The other two also provide massive power spikes to Adora. As previously mentioned, Adora gains enhanced pierce, range, normal type damage, and eventually plane damage when activating long arm. This ability is extremely important to her kit, giving her effective global range, as well as desperately needed pierce it used to handle dense rounds such as 98. The damage boost it provides is not to be understated as well, making her nigh invincible when the ability is up. Her final ability, Ball Flight, only begins to shine after she hits level 20. Before her level 20, Balls only serves to function as cleanup, potentially aiding in every round but not by much. Level 20 is when the ability starts to pick up, dealing quadruple damage and lasting 66% longer. This ability gives her the well needed single target damage to break down ZMGs and the bad layer as well as being able to clean up strays. A small tip for maximizing Ball's effectiveness, keep Adora on strong while the ball is active until a blue nose leaks. At that point, switch her back to first for a brief moment before putting her back on strong to break down the big blimp layers. Even with all of those fancy abilities, her main attack is no slouch, boosting a projectile count of up to 8, passable pierce, and attack speed makes her a prime candidate for alt buff. Adora's blood sacrifice ability makes it easy for you to AMD isolate her. Paired with decent uptime on AMD and a singular 300 alchemist is able to over double her balloon damage as well as triple her moab damage and surround damage at lower to medium levels. Not to mention, her recent buffs allow her to deal massive extra damage to fortified balloons, essentially nullifying fortification properties if she's your main source of damage. Adora has a notably good early and an incredibly powerful lead. Her early levels are no joke, providing an excellent early ability in long armor flight which leaves you immortal while the ability is active. She also gains lots of consistent DPS in the early game, with a few of her levels providing projectile count increases on the main attack. Her seeking as well as natural lead detection further aids in her dominance over the early game. She is also in the running for best late game out of any hero, disintegrating nimble rounds such as 92 and 95, and handling 98 in a duet with Overclock. Her ball provides spectacular cleanup as well as single target damage, dealing 9420 single target damage total under drums. A powerful hero is not without its weaknesses, and Adora is no exception. Her lack of camo detection could be a potential weakness, but is easily remedied by a camo village or a cleansing foam, or as of version 33, signal flare. 
as I was writing the script, version 33 patch notes has not released yet, so I kinda didn't, you know, predict a balance change that had nearly no build up towards it. But yeah, she pairs well with Signal Flare now. Especially since Bernie's stuff is pretty decent at balloon damage. It's not the best, but the DOD surely helps with 63, 76, 78. Although by the time you reach 76 and 78, you would already have your nukes up like First Strike or something else. Back to the script. You would already be going to get Cleansing Foam if you are running Adora since she pairs extremely well with Overclock. Her main weakness, however, is much harder to play around. For a hero on the same tier as Kirkill, she has an incredibly weak mid game. Ball of Light provides some damage but not enough to function as a solo while active, unlike similar abilities such as Etienne's UCAV. Long Arm doesn't give her enough pierce as her base 1 damage doesn't allow for much layer skipping, causing balloons to spawn an uncountable amount of children. Blood Sack's buff only lasts for 10 seconds at that part of the game, which makes it 3 for 3 for subquar mid game abilities. And also round 84, this round specifically and no other round in the 90s. That round is excruciatingly troublesome for her, being too early to consider sacrificing towers in mass while being too heavy of a round for Dora to handle without a higher level or immense support at least. This round wouldn't be that big of an issue if you were, per se, using Dora for a blackboard strategy since if you're running Blackboard Strike, you're playing safe rather than playing efficiently. And if you're not playing efficiently, you can go for a stupidly early Adora 20, which goddamn slays 94. Luckily, she has some excellent synergies to work around her mid game weakness. Not her on 94 weakness, however, you are still fucked. Adora's nature of being a selfish DPS hero causes most of her best synergies to be supports. Tabo, Snowstorm, Moab Glue, Moab Press all need no introduction, being amazing general supports in the late game with a very potent mid game. Especially Sabo, the balloon sabotage ability still holds much value in the mid game. With the slow layer choking through balloons, its ability essentially doubles your relative damage for 15 seconds at a 60 second cooldown. Other niche air supports he pairs well with are First Strike, Sticky Bomb, and Overclock. As we all know, First Strike provides excellent run when her damage, as Adora is not quite enough to solo the round. However, FSE still pairs extremely well with Adora before round 100, covering her ZMG weakness as well as being insane overkill for Ceramic Rushes. It still holds some value after Adora hits level 20 as well, nuking the ZMGs of 97 so Adora can have all abilities up for the start of 98. Sticky Bomb is quite similar to First Strike, dealing excellent single target damage for ZMGs as well as providing noticeable round on her support. Overclock is another great tower to pair with Adora, boosting Adora's damage enough to completely demolish key rounds such as 95, 96, 98, and 99, letting her execute her role as a main DPS flawlessly. I would like to point out that despite popular belief, the Sun Avatar is not a good pair with her. Hi, post script writing QE here, um, yeah I was horribly wrong on this, Adora Sav is probably her best black border strategy because of, again, you don't need to play super efficiently and maximize everything for black borders, and Savitar's absolutely zero reliance of abilities in the mid game, as well as being good enough in the early 80s and even early 90s means that it can hold the line well until you can get Adora 20, which you will get earlier because, again, you're not playing super efficiently, so you can choose to get her level 20 super early. Uh, post script writing QE out. Her unique playstyle leaves no room for a duet with Sav. There are two main ways to play Adora, late game carry and double DPS. To play Adora as a late game carry, you would usually use ports to carry the mid to mid late game and begin sacrificing when the combination of your supports and a low level Dora starts to fall off. Usually around 94, 96, or 98, somehow. 
This place all leaves no room for us to ask, since you're better off investing into support for Adora, rather than getting a secondary DPS. Speaking of secondary DPS, her double DPS playstyle is also not friendly towards Adora Sav. That playstyle also centers around getting a decently expensive main DPS, such as Mob Domination or Inferno Ring, to pair with a medium investment in Adora to handle the late game. Even at minimal investment, Adora holds the line very well against DDTs, which most expensive tier 5s struggle to, making her not a bad choice for this playstyle. A lack of mid game doesn't affect this playstyle too heavily, as you would be using mid game carries to save up, which have no trouble saving up to a medium expensive tier 5, even with the subpar mid game hero. The tier 5 will usually carry Dora far enough to make her level 20 attainable just by sacrificing your mid game carries and downdraft. Yet again, getting supports in this playstyle is more effective than getting a tertiary DPS, and using Sav as your mid game carry instead is questionable due to costing quite a bit more than needed to get a uh, round 98 Adora 20. If you want to use Adora, don't use an avatars. If you want to use an avatars, don't use Adora. When paired with Bloodsack and Longarm, Adora has an effective infinite range, making her an excellent choice for every map. However, she still benefits too greatly from maps that allow her to consistently attack wounds without relying on her abilities, including hashtag ouch, quad, and ravine. That makes it 3 of 4 true experts that she particularly excels in. She's still extremely powerful in other maps however, being the only tower to have a 2 MPC on every map without abusing bugs. Please do note that 2 MPC isn't a good metric for measuring a tower's viability due to the many nuances it has and unfairly giving Adora a massive advantage, however it's still a good enough metric to show you that Adora works as a main DPS on every map. All in all, Adora is a very competent yet selfish main DPS hero that works on every map. She benefits greatly from being the center of attention, but her sub DPS potential isn't too horrible as well, being able to handle around 95 with ease even with minimal investment, which yeah, I don't think any other hero can say that except maybe Geraldo. But Geraldo is unbased as hell, so... Yeah, Adora's the only hero that can do that.